Welcome to Dungeon Coach Plays, where I give breakdowns on my personal campaign setting sessions, uh, my homebrew world of Corin in Rift of Nations, and give the DM perspective on some stuff that's going on behind the scenes. A lot of times whenever you all see breakdowns of live plays and stuff, you don't actually know what's going on behind the scenes, and sometimes big things that are moving and changing based on what the players do and all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's dive right into it. This is uh, my DM setup here on Notion. And uh, I'm going to go through it here, but just to give the general layout, because I think this is something that would be helpful, uh, especially for Dungeon Masters, is this is uh, notes that I'm going to start the session off with for sure. And then it goes into open world. I don't know where they're going to go. I don't know which choices they're going to make. I, I did give them a lot of options. This is a, more of a sandbox world. So this is how I've organized my sandbox world. Um, this is just a note for me to clarify to them, like when I'm describing travel, like you can interact with whatever. So if I'm describing something, I'm saying things are happening, you can stop me at any time and like, oh, I want to do this or check this just so they feel like they're still in control. Like I'm not saying they're doing stuff that they're not. So there's that. Um, so this little section of traveling, all these yellow things are the traveling from somewhere to somewhere. So this this is traveling section in the purple and the subsections are the different places they could go to and what would happen on the way to those places. And then underneath are the purple of the places they could go, right? So this would be where um, the abandoned post. So traveling to the outpost would be here right here if they choose this. And then when they get to the outpost, it's here. And these are drop down menus so I can have, you know, this pops in for whatever they're doing and this pops down for whatever they're doing, right? So it's, it's I can easily shift and move around from whatever I'm wanting to do where, based on wherever they want to choose, right? So, um, and of course I have a, a random encounter tables here as well. Oh, it's off in the thing. <laughs> Um, but I have random encounter tables that let me be able to shift and change randomly based on whatever is going on. So uh, this is for uh, rest encounters. And then I have my main section here for um, ran big full random encounters. So anyway, um, I'm ready for any sort of what randomness I need to throw out or the specificness of wherever uh, that's, that's specifically happening here. Uh, in each of these little sections, if there is something at all, right? So, um, what happened? How did they go down? Uh, we started off with a dice game. Uh, they they found the wanderers from uh, last session uh, that I described. They they made friends with the wanderers who were apparently a band of savages, but apparently they're not savages at all. They're pretty awesome. So uh, they had played a dice game and some gambling uh, with the wanders and stuff. So that was fun to kind of start the start the session off with that. There's literally a dice game that one of my players I came up with that we all played, and then they got some little gifts from the wanders as like a as a reward, a tangible reward for the cool stuff that they were able to do with it. Um, and then the something happens deck, the deck of some things. Uh, it's basically, if you know what the deck of many things is, this is the, uh, early on campaign version of this. I could probably make a whole video on this, but it's the something happens deck. I took a deck of cards, uh, ace through king, uh, of one suit and assigned something to it of everything. Right. And I threw in a joker. So basically, uh, on a one, something really, really bad with the BBG happens. So if they draw the ace, uh, that's real bad and something with the BBG happens. They don't know that necessarily. They don't even know who the BBG is. And this campaign doesn't really have a BBG, which is a whole nother conversation. So, um, and then it gets, it gets better and better as you go on. And if it's Jack, Queen, King, something really good happens and there's some cool stuff with it. But in, the full spectrum is shifted a little bit towards bad because uh, the, the middle there is technically still problems that come up, right? Um, so it's just, it's a cool thing for me to have um, uh, to separate myself from specifically choosing what happens. Cause then I could feel like, all right, the players say they're going to do this. And then I'm like, Oh yeah, but I change it. <laughs> and then it's like, feels like cheating. So I like this because it, it, I'm excited to see what, what cards pull, what's going to go down. And then, uh, the world can shift and change as I kind of move through it with the players. And it's really exciting for me. Um, so, uh, they drew the cards. Oh, and also if the, if, the player who who draws the card, there's one joker in the deck. And if the player who draws the card is a joker, something bad happens to that character specifically. And then the joker gets put back into the deck as a cool little thing to see like who draws the card is important, right? Um, so 
Uh, everybody roll the d20. Whoever rolled the lowest has to draw the card. So uh, Q, the barbarian, had to draw the card. So I fanned it out. Uh, he drew a two. So almost a one, <laughs> but he drew a two. Uh, and a two is, spoiler alert for all of the everything else here, a two is Lycan's attack, the tech nation, right? So um, there's been a looming uh, a lycanthropy situation going on that the players are just starting to figure out or know about. And then um, the uh, army, a uh, huge amount of Lycan's attack the city of the tech nation so they have no idea though they are on their way back uh they're on their way back so that they, they don't necessarily see that so i told them this deck could have something immediately happen to you guys or it could be something in the world that y'all don't even know about so that was a cool little thing for that and it was like ominous like oh god what just happened we just drew two i feel like something bad i feel like this is a disturbance in the force <laughs> so there's that and then they set off to greenhaven um so uh yeah there's that there's there's some other there's this note here for myself is i i want them to draw the card in a city so i was like all right cool where are you guys going and they were going to green haven so i was like okay cool and if they had gone somewhere else i would have had them draw the card here because some of the cards need you to be in like a, a a large location where somebody could feasibly there's some things on the cards that wouldn't make sense if you're in the middle of nowhere to draw. So uh, I waited for them to get to Greenhaven, which was the city that they uh, came from, which is right here, this little uh, uh, forest nation city in the outskirts. Well, forest nation. There's, there is no more forest nation. So anyway, you'd have to watch the last episode for that. And there we go. So now they are traveling and they travel back to Greenhaven. Everything's fine. They kind of update everybody there and then they move, they move on back out again. They head towards um, the abandoned outpost tower. So as far as the map goes, um, they head towards uh, right here. So they, they had traveled south, got here, went to the forest, came back out because they, they almost died. And then came to the wanderers here, made friends with the wanderers. Now they're heading back here and they're going towards the outpost tower. So on the way to the outpost tw tower, I go here and I go outpost and I open it up. They find the actual people from the outpost, the sol the tech soldiers from the outpost. Um, they find them because I was like, okay, I want things to change and be different where they choose to go, right? So if they originally were at that, the, that first camp right here, this first little setup, if they originally were here and then went here first, this would be a very different encounter. They wouldn't have encountered these people. They would have, it's a whole totally different thing, but I'm like, okay, since they've gone here and time has passed, what would happen and change? So the tech nation soldiers who have been infected with lycanthropy are here and they are run. they've ran out of, uh, uh, whatever else that they're doing. And they're starting to figure out this whole lycanthropy thing that they got going. So just out here, they are outposted up, up here. The, they travel past them and they see them on the side of the road. They're kind of setting up camp, and one of them, one of their, one of their people, is kind of like sweating with with some sort of uh, sickness or illness, which is the lycanthropy. Um, and they kind of come over. They try and help him out and everything. And one of the players is like, he's like, I don't trust these people. I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm just keeping guard. Um, so it's interesting to have some of the players engage with the NPCs, and then the one player didn't because he really, really cued the barbarian wanted to really evaluate the situation. So then I was like, all right, hey, you know what? Make a perception check just to kind of see if you notice anything here because you're, you're feeling fishy. And it, and these are lichens. So, uh, and he rolls a 16, which is uh, which is for, for level two people, totally respectable. So I got up and I got with the little whisper at the table and uh, I told him that you see weapons, you see tech nation weapons and some other things that they have not let on that they have. They've, they've said they have nothing and they, they, that, that, um, they need help and all this kind of stuff. And it's just not adding up. There's something a little weird about that. So he's like, okay, cool. And then they, they, they left the people. They told them the way, hold up and Lee. Um, and I was going to try and follow them. I wanted them to be, uh, to join up with them. And then at night wake up and be attacked by werewolves. Cause these are all lichens. Um, and, uh, but then I, they they really didn't want to um, them to come with them, and they 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 dissuaded them from doing that. And they said, no, 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 stay here, take care of your friend. We just helped him out. He needs some rest. Okay, cool. And then they they left. And then about half an hour, they were kind of having this conversation, and they were like, we should probably turn back around and go check them out. So it'd be only been about fifteen minutes. But when they turn back around and come back, they're already packing up camp because these these lichens were going to 
follow them. Um, and they are, they're already packing up camp. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa hey. And they came back. Some interest, some, some uh, based on what Q saw, they, they confront them about it, trying to intimidate them. Um, a little bit of a, a social encounter scuffle of what's going on. Like, why do you have these things? And they kind of be, and from the role play perspective on my end, these are humans that have lycanthropy within a matter of weeks ago and they don't know how to control it they are not they're not doing well with it and they're telling them no no no, don't like don't and like there's an emotional like response that they have to stay calm and as they chose intimidation tactics um it like amped up some of the people and there's the final intimidation the guy snaps and he starts to shift and change into a werewolf they're like oh god okay okay and then i made saves for the other uh people around to see if they also like oh no this is happening and then they had it too one of them did so now two of these four individuals that they came across are shapes are turning into lichens i ruled it as a one round transformation stun so while they're transforming it's a one round stun because this isn't this is early on these are introduction into lichens i don't want this to be a i'm not trying to I don't want to be too unfair. Like this is lycanthropy. This is a, a essentially permanent uh, disease that I can inflict on these these players to turn them into werewolves. I want this to be a, a hard thing for me to do, but I want it to be possible. And they have the ability to stop it, right? So um, that was one thing, one layer here. So the, how the the fight opens up, how the fight was working out here, is. Um, when they transform, it's a stun, which is a, a reward to the players. This was never a mechanic uh, whenever they first encountered these werewolves. I was going to either have them all turn on them at night or uh, while they're resting, they would they would attack them as like a surprise type situation. Or um, I was going to, if they joined parties, if they joined parties, I had an entire encounter, uh, an entire encounter uh, down here uh with gorilla gorillas gilaros it's the tusks four-armed gorillas an entire counter where they're going to join up there if they join together they're going to go forward and get attacked by these uh gorilla creatures and during that combat the werewolves would have shifted and changed that was my original envisioning of this right uh so the encounter that i prepared was four lichens that were in human form trying not to turn into lichens and uh two huge uh four-armed tusked gorillas attack the party and they start to have to fight and protect protect themselves and through fighting with the players turn into werewolves and then they lose their minds right and they become feral and they attack anything so that would have been absolutely crazy but i don't want to force that you know what i mean i don't want to force that on the on my party it's where you have to join up with these people. I tried to convince them to join up, and I think that would have been a cool encounter, right? Um, and those gorilla things, I'll, I'm going to take, I have that encounter. I'm going to move it off to the side. Maybe it comes back in somewhere else. Um, but yeah, that was a, would have been a really interesting encounter to fight alongside um, uh, these, to fight two gorillas alongside your former allies that joined you turning into werewolves that had just joined up with your party so anyway that didn't happen um and i threw on this extra stun round because i thought it was a creative thing that they did they went back and they got the jump on these people and here we go uh, another layer to the mechanic was they had to be grappled before they could be bitten right i didn't want to be able to just like start biting them all and then they just get get bit and they had to make a saving throws and all that kind of stuff right? that feels cheap if, if they get lycanthropy i want them to be able to cope with it just as if if, I, if their player di if their character dies i want them to be able to cope with it and feel like the death was earned and it wasn't cheap shot for me you know because if i wanted to give them lycanthropy i could i could just have them all not be stunned and start biting at them and someone's eventually going to save a dc and i could set the dc really high the dc was 10 and i told them that um once someone got bit um uh so I wanted to throw in the layers there to keep it fair so that it does feel fair whenever they, because they're only level two, whenever something actually does happen, it's like, oh no, like we, 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 I could have, you know, it was, it was within reach to stop happening. So anyway, back to the story is, uh, they, 
two of the four of them of these of these people they encountered start turning into lichens and so they start going to town that one of them starts to try and hold them down and grapple the other one's trying to stab it out so he can't you know uh, bite the person in front of him uh so they only use claw attacks so that was a cool little thing that they combo combo did together on one of them uh the other one starts getting attacked with range attacks as it's shape shifting uh, and then uh, the artificer takes that one out completely. So one of them drops during all of the scuffle, not to give a round by round <laughs> breakdown. They do all each end up <coughs> shifting and turning uh, to, into their lichen forms. There's one big one that it starts to square off against the artificer who just took down uh, one of the other lichens. So it gets to the point where Q, the barbarian, cut, like got in between like uh, because Q, the barbarian, is a warforged. None of the players know this yet. None of the players know he's a warforged. Uh, one of them knows he's a warforged. The artificer does because they've confided in each other individually. But the rest of the other two does, don't know that he's a warforged. And lycanthropy against a warforged. Interesting, right? What would happen there? That's a whole other side topic. Uh, but he he knows this. I talked to him after the game, and he's like, I I'm putting myself in front of it because I feel like I'd have a better chance against whatever this is if I can even get lycanthropy. Um, so uh, he gets in front of a gets in front of him and get, tries to protect him. Uh, he gets grappled by the big guy, and I say like he I, I describe the teeth opening up, snarling, lashing, uh, about to bite you. So next round he's going to bite you um, unless y'all can do something about it. So there's the thing. Can they stop it? Can they either knock him out? Can they get him free? Can they do whatever? And the next round goes through. They deal a bunch of damage to him, and as soon as I realized that they were trying to go for the knockout. To deal damage i told the health i was like all right this thing this thing has 15 uh 15 health left so for level two that's not no slouch i was like can y'all get it around uh and stop it before and they go all the way through they get all the way through and the final person i was like the ne next turn next turn i'm biting him i'm biting him next turn you see the kind of stage i'm setting up here right so that they know i can right now within the i can i could roll the damage i think the final damage they needed was like um seven seven damage to, to finish him off and the last that last person was going and the last chance they had they rolled they they hit first of all because the, the person before missed so that was a big miss uh they hit and they had a chance i was like you have to roll on your d8 you have to roll a uh, i think a, a four or higher and you'll be able to stop it or five or higher and they rolled a three and they rolled a two or a three or something uh and the thing had three health left but that would have never mattered and it could have felt like i was just like oh it's just barely hanging on even if i'm 100 percent honest that my players know i'm 100 percent honest and they they because my, my players know i'm not like just you know fudging stuff behind the screens and everything like that but it's so much more legit and straight up in these moments if you choose to do this and re reveal these type things and put that bar out there for the players to have to try and get and see and feel it was around that like, oh no and like now if i bite him now and he fails now this is feels feels great it's going to feel great around the table it's going to feel earned it's going to feel right you know especially with lycanthropy little bit i know this is a warforge so that's a whole nother conversation but anyway um so uh the three health left is three health left it had 30 health total it's at 27 damage dealt yep uh and it's now its turn and it bites him i was like make a constitution saving throw the dc is 10 this is big and i had him roll in the tower of doom which is this big dice tower in the center of the table um rolled it 13 Whew, he's okay he's okay so <laughs> um that was uh they a the say even just making that save that was my only goal is to bite someone and have them have and get a save to see whether they fail or not i don't care just triggering a save is what my goal was um and yeah that was a cool big uh, big cool fight and then they ended up wrapping everything up and each of them got a kind of a killing blow on each of these uh werewolves and then at the end they shifted back into their human forms and they kind of all sat around looking like we just killed four dudes but then but they were attacking us so there's an interesting little turmoil uh thought there back to the charts right so they travel to the outpost and then they get to the outpost they find the outpost it is mainly uh it's extremely fortified and they try and get into the front and they, they try some methods and fail one player finally gets a grappling hook pulls themselves up and sees across the way there's a massive opening in the side and they're like oh okay and they go around <laughs> and then they walk right on in and there's just an, an abandoned outpost this is a technician outpost that had 
um, technician soldiers in in this outpost. Um, one of them got infected with lycanthropy on their out, like they went out into the into the woods to kind of explore some stuff. One of them got attacked by lycan, slash bit and, and infected, and then they all kind of came back and like tended to his wounds and healed him up, and everything's fine. They rebarricaded everything, and then the dude uh, shifted into a werewolf in the middle of the campsite and took everyone out. Uh, well, to, infected everybody with lycanthropy, and now that that was the group of four soldiers that they just dispatched of, right? Um, in this tower, there was one more survivor, uh, Gregory, one more survivor who has lycanthropy, and he's trying to control it and trying to just, you know, stay calm and keep to himself and everything and figure this thing out in like a more contained way. Uh, so the players come, they end up finding him, they find evidence that there's somebody living here, there's like a bed, a cot, and there's like there's like fresh movement of things all everything else looks messed up but there's a, in this little pot section that seems like it's lived in um they find some uh documentation of what happened and then they end up finding the person and joining the party i very much role played a scared individual and he's like no i, I swear I'm, i wasn't bitten i swear no one asked for any insight checks no one asked for anything like that uh, i was i was i guess very convincing role player of this gregory guy he's like look look, look no i don't have any bites yeah and like I showed my neck, but he didn't get bitten in the neck. He got bit in the center of the chest. Like, and that that's where the infection was. And he has all these scars there, but they didn't check his shirt. They didn't ask him to do whatever. So they had no idea that he's actually a lichen and they completely trusted him. So it was an interesting thing for me to have just like a little curveball card. And then uh, they end up uh, figuring out all the, whatever happened there. And they set off towards uh, grandma Corey's house, which is Q's grandma. <laughs> so they uh start setting off that way and I, i'm trying to keep a balance of like what kind of uh what what things have already happened i don't want to have in, in count random encounters be too heavy on the session i'm trying to think of what i want to accomplish during the session and and and, and if i want to throw a random encounter curveball because they already had the, the werewolf fight so i think i'm okay here and then they they travel on through uh with with Corey's house and they get to Corey's house. I had some funny little fake traps of, I imagine what an old woman would set up to protect her house. And it was just this, um, there was a sign that says, don't go this way. And then the, uh, the players found it and they're like, I guess we're going to, we're going to keep, we're going to keep going. And then they kept going, you know, just these weird, weird traps that like a senile, uh, a dementia, old person would try and set for their their campsite to protect themselves. And it was just these weird, goofy traps. Uh, one of the traps was a trip trap, and it, it dropped this like green sludge on them. The green sludge was healing. It was like healing stuff that Corey, his grandmother, is like trying, like making uh, con potion concoctions, and she was trying to make something that damaged things, but she accidentally made something that heals things. So. It was. It would have been a funny little moment, but whenever it landed on Q, Q is a Warforged once again, and the Warforged, um, uh, he doesn't get healed by normal healing means. Uh, as a player, uh, he does not get healed by healing spells or healing potions. He is a, a mech type tech cre uh, a creation, so those don't affect him at all. So this healing sludge lands on him, and I was going to say that you get healed for some points, but then it was Q that it landed on, so I was like. I get it's just green sludge on you. So uh, the players never even knew that it was a, a little healing potion thing. Um, Cause I didn't want to say that it doesn't affect him. Cause then I'd be throwing him under the bus because as a dungeon master, when you have a secret of a player, you have to, you know, protect it and, and respect it. I do give out clues constantly about weird things happening with Q and like, no, it just doesn't seem to like whenever Q got bit, like he's a warforged and he got bit. I was like, it bites into him. And then it just, uh, the, the teeth bite the armor that you just hear nothing but metal. So I'm literally saying it hits nothing but metal because q is metal right um and i was like and the teeth pull back and he shoves them off of them and you you notice there's no blood splatter so you feel like he's okay you know like i'm trying to describe things that are just a little weird and off like he just got bit but there's no blood splatter um because i'm being very specific and tactful with my language to not reveal that he's a warforged but then uh, uh keep that keep that uh uh secret ball growing right so anyway um now uh, they get to Corey's house and um, there we go. There we go. And Corey's house is just a big, huge mess. Uh, there's there's stuff all over the place. Um, 
uh, he he walked into the house first by himself, just to look, kind of get up to speed, which was smart by the player to be able to talk to her. Like, hey, I have I brought people here. Don't uh, say anything about me being a warforged. And I had this is an illusion because like she wouldn't have recognized them because she knows him as his true mech, like his 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 warforged face, not this illusion face that he has this uh, collar that projects this illusion uh, onto his face. Um, and she wouldn't have recognized him, but he goes in there first and then she's like, he gets her up to speed and then he brings everybody else in. So that was a smart move by the player because uh, she could have thrown him under the bus, but like, who are you? Who are you? And like, she would have freaked out and like not known who he is because if he hadn't realized that, but he did. And he said, let me go in there first by myself. And then he, he so that was smart. That was a smart move. So the secret's still alive. Um, and uh, Corey has memory loss and she's, uh, she's had this effort, amnesia and all this kind of stuff going on. And uh, the party have these crystals, these crystals that uh, Darius has uh, from given them, given to them from the church, has these crystals. And um, they're using them to, to put on uh, these, the, the foreheads of these people. But what, what they don't realize is these crystals that help you remember stuff is triggered it triggers the church the church knows when these crystals are used and, and it's almost like a tracking beacon so they're like oh my gosh wait a second there's this has been you we got to go get these crystals. so they have now especially using it on Corey. there's a big uh uh ping that goes off to the church of oh my goodness like something's going on here and they're going to be getting attacked by some uh church assassins on the way back to the tech nation so that's going to be a fun little uh, encounter there um and yeah, we will see that. You'll see that next episode. So tune in um, to them to get attacked by church assassins, which sounds crazy. Um, but anyway, uh, they use one of the crystals on her forehead uh, and triggers her memories. I had uh, them. I had the player that did it roll, and every time that they rolled higher than ten, uh, it triggered another memory, and he rolled three in a row. So that was three levels to her memory. And if you see it right here, oh. If you see it right here, here's her entire memory uh, loss situation. And duh, 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 you got three of them, right? Another cool thing about this little notion thing that I use. Um, so she remembered that she had siblings. She remembered their names. And then she remembers that her father could like st manipulate animals and like control animals. And then the third memory was that she also can help and control animals. Strange and crazy, right? So... Um, uh, that might be another little encounter that they encounter on the way back. Some sort of fight that happens and Corey like, like manipulates the creatures and stuff. So that'll be interesting. Um, and yeah, so that, that was kind of, they had the whole conversation with her and they had the memories and stuff. And they're like, you need to come with us. And they saw that she has rot. It's like she's, she's coughed up some black stuff. Um, and she's showing symptoms of rot. And they're like, we need to get her back. And so they're like, all right, we need to get back. It's been, it's been long enough. And then they head and set back to Aldor, the Tech Nation, to return uh, after this little soiree they've had over, I got to calculate how many days that's been, but uh, they start to make their way back. And as they make their way back, I like to end sessions with some sort of big curveball, some sort of um, cliffhanger, right? So they get a message from the Tech Nation uh, into their sending stone that the Tech Nation gave them. It's a one direction sending stone. I didn't give them a sending stone to start the campaign off with. It's a tether from you can send me a message once a day, 25 words. Here we go. Um, and uh, they get a message from the Tech Nation saying uh, Tech Nation attacked um, beast creatures attack uh uh red alert like all the type of phrases i forget what I, what i said the phrase where i had it i had it down um but uh they they the tech nation is under attack by lichens and uh all forces report back uh immediately da 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 da, da. and they are like we gotta go and so then they set back off towards that place um i didn't want to throw that at them or too early because then it's like oh well we sorry we have we want to do this we want to do this we want to do this and it would be like no you're doing this so i waited until um they were able to choose everything they're doing all right we're gonna go back to the tech nation and then i'm like here we go that was the two from the deck of cards uh was the lichen attack so what a perfect time to trigger it which is why i also said that i don't uh these cards don't trigger immediately it triggers whenever i as the dungeon master feel like it makes sense for them to trigger and this was the moment it makes sense um so there we go that is the session six they're heading back towards the tech nation that's currently getting attacked by lichen so let's see uh how that whole thing goes but that'll be a story for another time stay creative 
Uh, check out the links down in the description for all of the, the backstory here if you want to see what's going on in the whole world. I have an entire uh, a playlist of that and the, the video that's sh showing how all of this thing works. Um, and yeah, if you want to check out the main channel, if you, this is, if, I'm assuming you, this, that you've seen this, you've had to see my main channel before this channel, but anyway, cause this channel doesn't even have any subscribers right now, but anyway, uh, this is fun. I hope y'all like these little, little stories getting the behind the scenes action. Stay creative. Think outside the box.